part one of our interview with chairman and CEO of Amusement Park Entertainment, Jimmy Smith. Now back to our host, Kevin Kelly, on the Buzz Bubble. So I worked out of Jesse's office because we were working on the long format stuff. Because David had done um, BMW film series. Oh, wow. So he was definitely um, big in that space. So I got to work from LA out of Jesse's office doing the long format stuff for David and BBDL. Wow. So he and um, Andrew Robertson brought me on over there and let me do my experimental thing over here. So we did some stuff for Snickers where we had the Black Eyed Peas. Okay. Uh, yeah. Snickers where we turned yeah. them into super dope, super dope. <laughs> superheroes, so that was cool, and um, and that was a long format thing. That was those were many web series, many movies that ran online. Then we had Madonna for Motorola when they did the first they did the first iTunes phone. It wasn't the iPhone wow. that had iTunes. It was the Motorola Rocker that okay. had the um, iTunes in it. Yep. And you worked with Madonna to launch that? Yeah, we worked with, well, in that one, shoot, it was a phone booth. The whole idea was to say you can have music on your phone, right? Mm -hmm. So we had a phone booth out in the middle of the desert, and we had this um, teenager off in there. Madonna walked into the phone booth, but followed by her was Bootsy Collins, Little Richard, Beethoven. Even Biggie at the end. By the time, by that time, it got um, Questlove from the Roots, um, Iggy Pop, wow. Frey. I think was it the Frey? I can't remember which one it was, but it, it was so jam packed. You always thought the jam in here. Yeah, it was all these musicians. It was jam packed, and then the last dude to walk on was Biggie, and he had passed away by then. Right, right. But we still um, put him off in there, and, and Madonna goes, Biggie, no! <laughs> and then from there, I went to Shy. Um, Chad had gotten Gatorade. Okay. He had just gotten it. And I didn't know it at the time, but Lee had wanted to work with me for years. So it wasn't just me. It was mostly me, but Lee wanted to work together too. So he had admired my work from when I was at um, Whitney Kennedy. Okay. So um, we finally got to work together on, on Gatorade. That was Did he, do you remember seeing young Jimmy's book from oh, the no. He didn't remember. No. But he cracks up, he cracked up at the story. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't know the story, he thought that was funny. He used to have laughs off of that. Oh, that's great. All right, so, gee, Gatorade took you to shy it. Um, great work. I mean, it was the intention to for you to jump right into long form? And I mean, the two great campaigns that come to mind is, uh, you know, Replay and, and, and also, I'm a Holy Grail fan, so the Holy G. My man, oh, give me some doubt. Give me some doubt. That was like right on. It was spot on. It was amazing, and uh, you know, Under, most underrated campaign there. Unbelievable. Yeah, <laughs> come, you know, well, it's about. That was fun. It was probably when when did it come out? It was before. Two thousand and nine. It was it was supposed to launch on the Super Bowl. That was the whole plan. When we did, when we did G. Yeah. It, um, when we launched G, we didn't say what it was. Right. It was just a group of athletes and and Lil Wayne talking, explaining what the concept behind G was, and he ended it with that's G, and the G logo would come up, but it, it wasn't bolted with the um, lightning bolt, with the Gatorade, oh, yeah. to let everybody know, oh, it must be Gatorade. And um, I think, it, no, I, not I think, it was the number one most searched item on Google Trends. Wow. So um, that launched January 1st, so we were supposed to, uh, for that, all the way leading up to the Super Bowl, weren't gonna tell anybody, but there was a little bit of panic um, in some quarters, and, and they made us bolt it. <laughs> so we had to give up that. It's so cool, cool, right, it's right. cool, it's a good looking logo, it's good. Compromise. It's good. And um, so then Quest for G was gonna launch on Super Bowl and send everybody to this um, sports and entertainment website that we had created called missiong.com, because everything is is built on the G, even right, to this right. day, you know, G series. Campaign, start with the spot, send them to the web. Yep. More panic. God bless them. <laughs> <laughs> and we, uh, about a week, about a week before Super Bowl, we had to ch change it up and figure something else out to do because they were. A um, week before the Super Bowl. Yeah. Now you're in a different Super Bowl spot. Yeah. That didn't go so well. 
<laughs> they gave you all of the wheat to come. <laughs> but they were, you know, they they were visionary enough to let us do the Jeep, which was still a radical. Oh, it's amazing. Yeah, um, I mean, that was one of my questions too. Yeah. It's like you could do great work, but to get a client and a and a team that buys into it all. Right. I mean, right. Had a couple of hiccups, but overall they really stuck with it. And I mean, you know, when you do something like that too, it's not just there's so much involved. You know, we're going to get all these players, yeah. we're going to shoot here and here and here. Well, it wasn't, the, the, the beauty of that entire launch wasn't just the commercials. It wasn't just the online videos. It was packaging. Oh. Right, we redesigned the Jeep. Myself, Lee, cat named Jayanta Jenkins, um, Eric. Yeah, we designed that whole thing. And, and it started off with this cat. He, he came in, he was, uh, his name is Sham. We were looking for um, designers to come in and help us, you know, concept uh, whatever the logo was going to be. Okay. And we had no idea it was going to be Jeep. We are just launching Gatorade and we we figured it out as it go. But the first thing we need to do is come up with a, a logo. So Jay had a buddy say, hey, we should bring in Sham. Sham is good. So Sham comes in. He had a bunch of logos. You know, a bunch of them. Every, all of the des freelance designers did. They had a bunch right. of logos. All right, all right, all right, all right. And then he had this Jeep. And that's when I said, I said, there. that's not only the logo, but that's the campaign. We should build everything around Jeep, which was obviously crazy. Because at the time, on the streets, you know, oh, that's Jeep. That meant that was dope. Yeah, G for gangsters and stuff like that. G for God, seventh letter in L um, alphabet. And we had a planner, Scott McMaster, that went out and um, um, added G is to gravitation, G is for gravity. So, ah, that's right. And then they dug deep. It's not just gangsta, it's gangster. And they said, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we got the G men with the giants. So it was this game about what we're, we're, what all these G, and what you found with that letter, which was bugged out, is I, I think it has more things attached to it than, you know, anything else. Yeah. So. Yeah. But you took the whole, you know, distilled it down to one level right. successfully and launched that. And now yep. people, you own G now. Yep. That's pretty great. cool. That was great. But whenever you can take a brand and own a letter or a color or something so, many, you know, some, something so simplified, yeah. it's like a huge. Well, that was a, again, that was a dope team between, you know, Lee Clow, Jayanta Jenkins, um, Brent and Steve, who did, um, who originally came up with the underpinnings of Replay. I mean, it, it was uh, Donna Lamar, yeah. who, who came up with your quest for G. Her, John, Donna Lamar and Javier Castillo came up with um, quest for G. Quest for G. So you, yeah. You mentioned Replay, we didn't talk about that. Replay, it was amazing. Now, how'd that, how'd that develop and was the original intention to, well, it was, again, it was a big concept. And it was not even in your control. You're talking about getting teams together that, who knows if you can get 15 people or, you know, uh, two squads of 11, who knows, and you guys did it. Right. Well, we had, um, we, again, none of that would have existed without MissionG.com. MissionG.com was designed to be a sports and entertainment website. Okay. And the whole thing was, we, were, we had convinced successfully Gatorade that you can't keep talking. They want to reach a younger demographic. They felt like they were getting too old and unhip and uncool. So we told them you can't just sit up there and keep doing TV commercials and hope that that's going to get it done like it used to 10 years ago or whatnot. Right. You have to st go after these kids in, new, in a, new a, a new variety of ways. And what Mission G was supposed to be, on top of videos, was supposed to be able to download apps from Mission G. It was going to be a whole sports and entertainment portal for all different types of um, platforms. And um, again, to Gatorade's credit, Sarah Rob O'Hagan is the one that um, headed up G um, from the client side. Uh, another woman named Carla was her uh, right hand, right hand woman, Carla <laughs> Carla Hassan, Hassan, and um, between those two, uh, and then obviously uh, Indra, Indra and the cat over there named Massimo approved it over at um, Pepsi. But okay. they had to see that, and it was it was hard. Sure. But but you, I can't tell you how many clients you go to, you present, and they, and they don't see it and don't approve it and don't right. do it. So and, and then I uh, you know I'm again I'm working with a legend, 
with we all were with Lee Clow. So we, you know, it was it was a fun. It was fun. So getting to that, we convinced them that they needed missionG.com, a sports and entertainment portal. And they bought off on that. So then, okay, man, we sold it. We need content for it. <laughs> so um, I grouped the teams up and, and then told them how to add it. Sometimes we, we go. Um, and Donna and Javier were really great in this going, okay, we need a, one targeting women's, women athletes. Right. Another one targeting 17, uh, you know, 12 to 17 year olds, so on and so forth. And one of them, we had to fill it up with content, right? So we, um, Donna, Donna Lamar, Javier Castillo, we, we broke down as a team on what kinds of shows we needed. So we acted like a network. Wow. And while we, all of this is going, yeah, I'm saying, all of this is going on at the same time. We're creating content and having to shoot the content to launch on the Super Bowl. We're shooting Quest for G oh, in Spain. Was yeah, through the Super Bowl. All, all of this is going on at the same time. We're, we're shooting the, the, um, the black and white G launch, G manifesto spot with Lil Wayne. Right. And there's, there's more, all of it, print, the, the um, packaging, the labels, uh, stuff to, in store, POP, all that kind of stuff is going on at the same time. So it was nutty. So, um, so then when, we, uh, when we're doing all of this and we're coming up with the ideas for the shows, Brent and Steve had the assignment for G2. And G2 is different from Gatorade. Gatorade is targeting 12 to 17 year olds. They're burning up calories before it even hits the stomach, right? They eat something before it even gets burned up and gone. Whereas obviously as you age, you start getting later 30s, um, later 20s, early 30s, metabolism starts to slow up a bit. So the calories in G2 have been cut. So we need to come up with a show to target um, that demographic. And they came to me with, I believe they called it Quest of a Champion or something like that. Champ it had Champions of a Quest. And I believe the original idea was to have, you know, go back to like Kevin Garnett's school and have Kevin Garnett root on his team you know, help train his team right. and whoever else went to another school um, root on their team. But I don't think it was the back 10 years or anything right. like right. that. I don't, think it, I don't think it was like that. And then we, but together as a team, me, Brent and Steve cooked that um, thing up. And then, and those dudes are brilliant off the skillet and they did the rest. And I, oh, I, oh, I, and then. What were those concepts that you go, that is great. How we get these people to sign in, and, you know? How you get them to sign? Hey, in? The sixteen-year-old or sixteen years ago, football has been or right. might have been to come back. And, I mean, that was the most inspiring part. Is you were able to do that? Yeah. These guys are training. I think like, two months it was. Well, no, that wasn't hard. I mean, I, I changed. Well, one thing I did do, which uh, changed the name from Champions of Whatever to Replay, so that when you go back to somebody, that's like saying, you know. Everybody, everybody in this room, you and I would go, if you could change anything, what would you want to change? What would you like to do over? You know, that's what you have as a kid, right? Do over, yeah. do over, do over. right? Good. <laughs> that would have been a good name, but <laughs> do over. So it was, re it, 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 dude, they went nuts. Yeah. Oh, we're we're going to re, we're going to replay the game. We're going to re, like, we're going to, I'm going to be able to put on the helmet, strap on the shoulder pads, and we're going to. So it wasn't a hard sell. Oh, it wasn't, it wasn't a hard sell. No, in. they were, everybody was in. That was easy. That was the easiest part. And then once we did the, um, the first one, which was the Easton versus Phillipsburg, we found this school in, uh, two schools in Detroit for hockey. Kid had his neck slit. And, it, and, and these kids, when I call them kids, you know, these young adults were um, calling in and emailing and going on Facebook, do my team, do my team, going to Twitter, do my team, do my team. So Brent and Steve found that team with the kid with his neck slit. Next one was um, a double buzzer and a playoff game in Chicago. And the kid shoots, misses, uh, tips it back in. And uh. so which one counts? The, the, when he missed it, team A went, wins. When he makes it, Team B, his team wins. Team B, so which one? And they and they took the um, 
you know, took one of so it, it didn't matter, whoever. So that's a good replay. And so we replayed that one. <laughs> but the one, the big one is they're working on a movie. Sony's working on a movie as okay, we speak. I was going to ask about that. Yeah. So somebody did yeah. sign on and it's going to be Sony? It's, it's going to be Sony, and um, which is not cool. Too, the coolest thing in the world to me, my name won't be on it, and none of our team um, mates, Brent and Steve, names won't be on it. So that's not too cool. That isn't cool. No. Why is that? They have a tendency to do that. The same thing happened with um, Space Jam. Wait, I, on Space Jam, I do believe Rizwald, yeah, Jim did get his name on there. just like towards the end, he got, he got some DAP, special consultant or something like that. Special that thanks. Came? Space Jam came from where? From Jim Rizwal, who was, uh, was like it? my counterpart back in the day at Wyden and Kennedy, legend. Okay. Bo knows Spike Lee and Michael Jordan, um, Mr. Robinson's Neighborhood, and, and that was one of them. Wow. So that, and that's really why what set up this place is because we, we, in the advertising industry, we come up with these ideas that end up becoming bigger. Right. This ain't like back in the 50s and 60s where it's a TV campaign, runs on TV, and it's done, you never see, hear, heard from again, or unless you're watching the 100 Greatest Commercials Reel or something like right. that, right? right. These things um, have the potential and do go on to become multi-billion dollar businesses in and of itself. Like Space Jam made close to four billion dollars. So to give, you, you know, you got to have some perspective on, on what you're doing right. when, you, when you're creating these things for clients. And it, clients are great. They're awesome. Like even on, on, even on replay, Gatorade gave us the opportunity to um, be involved with it from a financial credit right. end, but some things didn't um, turn out so well. Not, not any fault of, of them. But they get it as part of their campaign. They get it as part of their brand equity. You know, that, that, oh, that it's, it's, it's huge. It's surprising that that was, you know, I don't think that's an easy task. It's, you know, dude, I don't yeah. know. It's, not really, it's really not that hard. If you do... Not it's, hard when you do. No, it's not hard for it. It's, it's not. Well, no, but I'm just saying, you've got the reputation of making it work for the brands. But yeah, I mean, I think everybody should be thinking about it. Now. It's, if you go back, man, and look at some of the things that have, have happened. For instance, Jerry, we are primed and um, really more in a position mentally and creatively to do the entertainment thing than anybody else. Because Think about it as as a um, as an ad guy. First of all, you got to, especially in this day and age, in the 21st century, as an ad guy, you have to. When you were coming up, at least when I was coming up, you got to go. Even to this day, but back in the day, I remember presenting my creative director a, a print ad, right? And he goes, "Yeah, it's really good. It's really good. How's it been working on TV?" No, 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 it's a great print ad though, right? How's it going to work in radio? How's it going to work in outdoor? Okay, dude, I got it. I got it. All right. I'm back and so, so you're thinking like that. So in this day and age, right, you, in the entertainment world, you have, say, you start with a feature film. You have to film. Well, if it's one of those blockbuster, like, you know, Hunger Games, whatever type of joint, it's got to have a video game. Right. It's got to have a video game. It's got to have an app. It's got to have an app. It's got to be, you know, it's got to have some stuff online and so on and so, so it goes, right? Oh, where's the soundtrack? Got to have music. So as an ad person, you're sitting up there doing that already. If you're doing working on TV, um, internet, whatever, an app, you're working in digital. You're working in creating little videos that are going to go, hopefully go viral. You're creating a, a piece of film that hopefully will go big online. Hopefully the, it'll blow up on TV. Oh shoot, we're working with Lil Wayne, or we're working with Kanye, or we're working with the um, the Black Keys. You know, so you're working in all of those for, uh, in a variety of media, of a variety of ways of creative expression. It's not that hard, Jen, to just translate that and and make it um, something more longer format. And, and, and it has happened. Look at Jerry Brockheimer. That was an ad dude. Oh, really? Yeah, he was an ad. That was an ad guy. He was a producer. Wow. Um, and then the cats over at Leo Burnett back in the day did um, the little Pop Warner football joint for McDonald's. Oh, yeah. Became Little Giants. Steven Spielberg saw it and said, hey, 
calls, calls the team up, y'all want to turn that into a, a film? It did. I have one, what's, what's the joint that I did? You know, I'm do 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 We did the Nike font campaign, which took place in 19, 1975. We created a ABA team, the Roswell Ray Guns. A cat who used to um, work at Wyden. I say he did this. Um, next thing you know, it becomes a, a, a basketball movie with Will Ferrell. So it, it happens. Wow, yeah. It's not that hard. No, it's just, it seems, still seems new. Like, you know, all brands aren't buying into it. And um, which I no. think is great. It's your position to be that agency that recognizes it and it's the place to go. I mean, everybody says, if you want to do something, you. You just do that one thing really well, and then when somebody needs to get that done, they know where to go, and that's you. <laughs> no, thank you. Yeah, and, and some other examples, all we're doing too is, with the exception of the digital component, all we're doing is rewinding the clock. Popeye the Sailor Man was the spinach farmers. That's what that was created for. That oh, was really? them. They get you to eat more spinach. That was their Got Milk campaign. They just wow. did it as a cartoon with Popeye. Yeah, I don't know that anybody knows that. Right? That's amazing. So, and, and obviously soap operas came from, you know, P&G and all of that. They were doing entertainment. Right, right. So it's not, it's really not that new. It's some, somehow we got away from, you know, that you can express and communicate and deliver messages and things outside of a 30 second commercial. We got, a, we got away from believing that you could. The delivery is the other part. Like we can, you know, we're a smaller agency, so we're preaching it hard because you don't have to have forty million in media to launch a, a show or a spot. I love that you call it shows when you're talking about getting make, creating content for G, for Mission G. And so we're preaching the same thing. Mm -hmm. You don't have to have. Look, this might not end up on TV. You know, this is going to end up on the web. Right. And can move your brand forward without running a TV spot. Dig it. And I, I get it, and I think a lot of people still do, there's so many when I present it. That's it for part one of our interview with Jimmy Smith. Tune in next week for part two. So I contacted all the big ones. Nah. <laughs> nah, I couldn't get a rattlesnake to bite me. And then you, you did your thing oh, yeah. according, according to her book, book right? Yeah, according to her book. And, and she said, she was wrong. She said, if you're a writer, don't worry about the art direction because they just want to know that you're able to write. Now, she was right. That should have been the proper way to go about it if you're a writer. And, but that wasn't. Everybody kept saying, well, you need, you know, your, your visuals aren't that good, your art direction. I said, I know, dude. I'm a writer. I'm, I'm, I'm a writer. So look, just look at my writing. But they couldn't seem to do that. Next week on The Buzz Bubble.